the topic of my session today over the next maybe 20, 25 minutes is growth in a challenged world. Why have I chosen this topic? Uh, because it's absolutely important. I don't think any of us doubt that we are in a challenging situation. Uh, but whatever happens, a company needs to grow. If a company doesn't grow, then it will die. That's the reason I picked this topic, growth in a challenged world. Next slide, please. So what's the big challenge? Uh, the World Bank report of June said that they expected the world GDP to shrink by 5.2% this year. Now, we are talking of a world GDP, which is anything between 85 to $90 trillion, 5.2. But remember, in that study, uh, they had assumed that India would grow by 1%, etc. I think now the India best estimate is negative 9 to negative 10. So that's, you know, straight away $200 billion off. So if I just look at the world, you know, uh, Britain at negative uh, 20, et cetera, I personally believe that the world GDP will be down closer to 8% or more. That's my guesstimate because I think when they update the numbers in September, I think you'll be closer to that uh, right now. So the world GDP is challenged. Almost every country GDP is challenged. The only country expected to grow this year is China. Only China's GDP is expected to grow because they took the precautions in January, March. And so they've had nine months of runway for them to grow. Next slide, please. So the starting position is what is the structure of the world economy? And that's what will determine <clears throat> what's going to happen. If you look at the <clears throat> structure of the world economy, agriculture accounts for about 6%, industry about 30%, and services about 64%. If I were to mirror that onto India, agriculture is about 14% for India, industry is about similar, 60, and services is about 55. Now, almost certainly we know that agriculture is not a global industry. Yes, we trade in agriculture commodities, etc., but it's a very local for local business. So almost every place, agriculture is doing well. It's done well in India, it's done well in Africa, every single country, agriculture has done very well. It's not been impacted by COVID at all. On the other hand, if you take services, services have been grossly impacted by COVID. Why is that? As soon as there's a lockdown, all airlines, all restaurants, all QSRs, all retail, every single thing is impacted. So if people don't go outside their home, where will the service happen? So the services industry is dramatically impacted. And that's the reason why India had a, a negative 23% uh, GDP uh, last quarter. That's the reason why uh, UK had negative 19.6. Because any economy which has a huge services component is going to be impacted with the lockdown. Because you're not going to you know, get people out there spending their money on services. So industry is somewhere in between. I think some parts of the industry have opened up. Uh, and some parts of the industry have it. So even in India, agriculture will be fine. Services is grossly impacted. Next slide, please. So if you look at the industries most impacted by COVID, okay, airlines, there's absolutely no doubt. Uh, even Singapore Airlines yesterday cut, I think, 2,000 for uh, about 4,000 jobs, which is 20% of their, uh, uh, you know, total workforce. All casinos and gaming. Now, from Macau to Las Vegas, completely closed. All leisure facilities, hotels, spas, hotels, everything closed. All auto parts and equipment companies, all closed. Oil and gas, that's the other one. So for six months on the trot, India's diesel consumption has dropped. Six months on the trot. Not one or two months, six months. So that obviously means lesser activity, industrial activity, lesser goods and services which are being transported to the hinterland. That's what it uh, tells us. So these are the industries most impacted by COVID. The retail industry is badly impacted. All the big brands, Brooks Brothers, J. Crew, J. Crew, JC Penney, everybody's gone belly up. Okay, Brooks Brothers was bought by somebody else for about $350 million. A brand which has a huge legacy, a brand which dressed up President Kennedy, Obama, etc. So almost every single physical industry has been destroyed or is up in chapter 11 situation. Okay, so that's what I would say, industries most impacted by COVID. Next slide, please. Industries least impacted by COVID, everything to do with insurance and health. 
believe it or not, insurance companies are now doing self declaration and giving you insurance. As soon as this happened, my insurance agent called me and said, Max Bupa is offering a health insurance scheme, Shiv, it's self declaration. Would you like to take it? I took that both for me and my wife, and then we insured ourselves. Okay, so I didn't need to go anywhere. And uh, this is the kind of business model which is uh, coming through right now. So anything to do with health, I believe has done well uh, in the last six months. Next slide, please. Next, if you look at industries, stroke segments, and I call them product segments, benefiting from COVID, dishwashers has been one of the fastest growing categories in India. Robo mops, people need to mop their floor, etc. Any robo which can do that, that's been selling well. Household gadgets, everything to do with automation of the household so that there is less grunge work involved from the lady of the house, the man of the house and the kids of the house. Okay. Online web, anything like we are doing the Zoom calls right now. Zoom shares as well as Zoom time has just moved up dramatically. The, the more than 300 million people in the world who are using Zoom almost every day. Online education has become big. And sanitizers, the hand sanitizer market has taken off, the mask market has taken off, the gloves market has taken off. So anything to do with health and the accessories involved with health, these markets have just grown dramatically. The question of course is, will this continue for a long time or will it taper off? We don't know, depending on when the vaccine will come and when the world will feel comfortable that we do not need to go back to all these uh, security blankets, okay? Next slide. So I'm asking everyone to take a nine plus 12 month approach. Why do I say that? Uh, let's take India as a start. India was a 2.8 to 2.9 trillion economy. Assume it drops by double digit, 10% this year. You've taken away $280 billion. Next year, even if it grows five, 6%, it'll only come back to full growth or the nine, 2019 level by the last quarter of 2022. So I would urge each and every company to have a plan for nine months, which is what I call a survival plan. You need to survive the next nine months and then 12 months consolidation and then move ahead. So that's why I call this a nine plus uh, 12 approach. And if you're doing anything less than that, you will put your company in danger. Of course, there are some industries where there's a tailwind, as I mentioned, that's fine. You don't need to plan for this, but most people, would be you know, sensible to plan for a nine plus 12 month approach uh, in tackling with, uh, to tackle COVID right now. Next slide, please. Now, one of the lessons which you've learned from every crisis, every slowdown, whether it's the 2008 financial crisis, whether it's the Great Depression, wherever it is, there is always growth in niches. When the overall market is down, there'll be growth in niches. There'll be countries which will grow. There'll be states which will grow. There'll be cities which will grow. There'll be districts which will grow and there'll be specific segments which will grow. At this point of time, what we are noticing is that premium segments are declining. Next, the popular or the bottom end of the market is declining. It's the value. Uh, I get what I pay for. That's the middle segment which is really growing in almost every single category. Okay, And premium will come back over a period of time. One of the things which consumers do repeatedly in a slowdown is to trust valued brands. And they want to be sure that the brand is not taking them for a ride. So that's what you really need to think about. So there are, there's absolutely amazing growth available in niches and you should try and drive that growth. It's only when you drive that growth that your whole team and the energy of the team will come back to a different level. Next slide, please. So what are the three things I would tell you uh, as you plan this nine plus 12 months uh, you know, uh, approach? Number one, whatever you do, stay on strategy. You have a strategy for your company. You have a strategy for the institute. You have a strategy for the institution. Stay on strategy. I cannot tell you what a big mistake it will be for you to move away from strategy. And a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of companies are sucked into the temptation. Like for example, a number of companies have got into mass. A tire company has got into mass. A number of companies have got into sanitizers. A paint company has got into sanitizer. When your main business is down by 20, 30%, what are you doing in trying to build a business of 10, 20 crores or at best 50 crores? 
it's an absolute waste of time and many senior managers and many management teams okay don't get the simple lesson that you create value by staying with strategy which is staying on your core it's the core which always contributes two thirds or more of the growth in your business so staying true to strategy staying true to the core of the business is the first thing i would say that you need to do for the next 9 to 12 months in doing this number one please conserve cash you cannot blow up money you need to rethink capex only if the capex is needed in current otherwise postpone it postpone the capex to next year or the year after that and finally retain talented people talented people will go to a place where they believe their talent will be best used or they have enough work or whatever dimension they might choose all three are important for you okay you need to conserve cash you need to rethink your capex and you need to keep talented people you can always get capital you can always get other stuff you can always get technology but you can never get talented people so if you ask me really ring fence your talented people and ensure that they are with you through this 21 months next uh, you know mistake i have seen most companies do in a crisis is either they over invest or under invest you know on the right thing for example some people might over invest or under invest in technology some people might over invest or under invest in an e-commerce business model some people may over invest or under invest in people and some people may over invest or under invest in engagement so you have to judge for your company that you are not over investing and blowing up money equally you are not under investing where you are not even making a difference to either yourself or the ecosystem so this is what i would say when you conserve cash and rethink capex etc i think a lot of people will tell you that you need to manage cost and my philosophy on cost right through the companies i've run is that there are two types of cost one is what i call bad cost one is what's called good cost so there's like cholesterol you have bad cholesterol and you have good cholesterol what are typical bad cost bad cost is inventory is a very bad cost procrastination is a bad cost slow decision making is a bad cost uh, excessive spend on some things is a bad cost these are typical bad cost okay high accounts receivables is a bad cost these are the bad cost that you need to really think about okay what are good cost high engagement is a good cost okay investing in technology is a good cost motivation is a good cost training and development is a good cost so segregate your costs into bad costs and good costs and really do the good cost part properly and take away the bad cost the biggest bad cost guys is in every organization cost happens because of tasks performed if a task is slow if a task is not being done well okay that adds to cost and many a time organizations institutions do not look at those tasks and say do we really need to do this task or can we automate them and do a better job of next slide please this is my last slide in terms of what i would do to plan growth the first is you must execute brilliantly you know it's good to have a 50000 feet strategy but you must bring it down to 5 feet to the level of the person who is doing the sales or customer service or whatever it is so execution must be top notch there cannot be any difference between what you say and what you will do so if your execution is at a level x it must move at least 10 20% up when you execute better you bring your cost structure down that's what's important so if you want to survive the next 9 months you have no choice but to out execute everybody uh, out there in every crisis we've known we've known that the best prepared companies succeed companies which try to be the best in their industry it doesn't matter which industry you are in in that industry you survive and you thrive when you give it your best if you do not give it your best your people do not give it their best then you will not be one of the few survivors in that industry in every crisis we found anything between 17 to 30% of companies going out of business so if your company does not need to go out of business then you have to ensure that you are the best at whatever there is and the key variables of that industry you must master and you must be the best at it once you believe that you have your execution under control and your team is executing well then you need to think about innovation 
what does innovation do innovation ensures that you are not competing on the same price platform for a product when you innovate then you're taking the consumer's mind away and saying hey i'm different and please pay me for this innovation one of the things we've noticed in every crisis including the great depression is innovation works whenever there's innovation you insulate it from the price war which is there in a crisis and by insulating it from a price war you ensure that you do very well let me give you a simple example from our cement business in the cement business there's a product called putty which is put on the wall before painting okay it's a white putty uh, just before the you know the pandemic broke in march we launched a, a rose scented putty why because the the workplace of the average mason or average painter is very dirty okay and we took this learning from soaps and shampoos and other personal care categories to say why can't we have a fragrant putty so we launched rose in the month of march and we followed it up with a lemon putty in the month of june there are two variants right now these two products already account for more than 30% of sale right now so that's the power of innovation okay it's a very simple category i've given you a very simple example in the whole textiles and apparel business we've gone with viral block yarn okay viral block you know fabric and viral block shirts and trousers okay so in every single case wherever we've innovated we have found that we have insulated ourselves from the commodity so these are simple examples i'm giving you if textiles and putty and cement can innovate surely technology guys can do much more and other brands can do much more so in order to survive and thrive the 21 months you need to out execute in the next 9 months and then you need to out innovate after that so that your company and your business is on a very sound footing so in summary at the end of my 20 odd minutes i would say that we live in a challenged world it's been around for the last 6 months the world bank says that the world gdp will shrink 5.2% this was the june reading i personally believe with countries like india slowing down the reading will be closer to negative 8% or more that's my guess okay please don't hold me to it there's no data point but that's my guess just looking at all the numbers across the world in that kind of a situation you need to plan your business extremely well okay one industry which is not impacted so much is agriculture india accounts india gdp 14% of india gdp is agriculture but agriculture accounts for 45% of all employment so that's fine the biggest impact of a slowing gdp is on services services account for 55% of india's gdp and they're badly affected because of lockdown the type of industries which have been impacted by covid are airlines retail anything which is physical anything depending on people going and spending their discretionary income is badly impacted uh industries not impacted by covid insurance and health not impacted by covid and very new sectors are opening up dishwasher segment is opening up sanitizer segment is opening up mass segment is opening up and when you look at the future think of a 9 plus 12 month plan i gave you the logic of my 9 plus 12 month plan because i believe it's only in the quarter 4 of 2022 or the quarter 1 of 23 that the world gdp will come back to the level of 2019 gdp which was between 85 to 90 trillion dollars and this is true for all the 10 big economies except maybe china china is expected to grow this year by 1% and maybe next year you know in the mid uh, single digits in every crisis we found that there is growth in niches and the simple strategy i would use is to stay on strategy to conserve cash look at bad costs and good costs and really really ensure that i'm spending the optimum amount on the things that matter so over the next 9 mo- months out execute be one of the best in your industry after that out innovate and try and do the best job so that's all i had to say ladies and gentlemen of uh, the alum association who are all on this call absolute pleasure to do this and uh, i'm really proud of the awesome work that baskar and team are doing to put iit madras uh, on the global map and earn all the accolades and the laurels that we've got over the last uh, few years so thank you very much uh, lata and iit m a uh, yeah we have we have some way. questions uh, yeah we have yeah, some questions, questions here shiv if you're okay, okay. to take it 
but how are you on time? Yeah, how much so time we have this question from uh, another. We just have about two, three okay. questions. So Go ahead. we are okay. So Dr. Ram Raju has asked. Need of the day is not routine employment in existing industries, but indigenous long-term training and development in S and T with focus on innovation, startups, related industry 4.0. For this training in, I can't hear you. Digital technologies and automation with emerging programming languages, software for designs. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So uh, his question is for training in digital technologies and automation with emerging programming languages, software for design automation of new systems, maintenance and modernization and automation of existing systems. What is the future in this area in India? I think it's very big. Uh, if you look at a company, let me take a company as an example. A company has three parts to it. The first part is the customer facing part. Every company has tons of data but companies use less than 5% of the data they have. Then in the center is what I call the engine room, which is all about productivity, ensuring that your processes run, they're all digitized, they're all automated. And the back end is all about procurement, okay? In all three areas, I think there's enormous automation possible. So in our aluminum business, in our cement business, in our pulp and fiber business, we have automated it dramatically. If you look at textiles as an example, most brands globally want end-to-end -end visibility of where have you sourced the fiber and the pulp from. So that's part of sustainability. If you remember, we had blood diamond a few years ago and blood coffee. So similarly, people are saying, I want to know what's the source of your fiber. What's the source of your pulp? Where are you getting that from? So blockchain helps us to actually track it from source to finish. So I think there are enormous applications of digitization and all the skills that you spoke about every single one. I think uh, this pandemic has actually lifted it to a new degree and I think that won't drop. Lata? So is the country, yeah, is the country going on optimum spending? Uh, I don't know. See, th this is the thing. Uh, every country has generated stimulus, lots of stimulus. So let's start every country. America, I think is between 12 and 15% of stimulus, 3 trillion on an economy of 22 trillion, closer to 15%. Japan is about 20%, 1 trillion on 5 trillion. Okay, and everybody's in that range. Now, what has the stimulus done? The stimulus has done, uh, done one good thing, there's no run on the banks, which was the lesson from 2008. So if you look at the stimulus this year, it was all finished in 30 days flat. It's amazing the speed with which politicians move because they clearly recognize that, you know, this is important. On the other hand, every single government has, you know, issued lots and lots of schemes and we do that every year. Are these reaching the right people? I don't know. For example, there's been an MSME scheme of 10,000 crores announced, I think four years ago. I don't know how many have benefited from it. So I, I would say that I think governments are better off doing few things, but ensuring that, the true recipient of that scheme gets the benefit. I think governments have been guilty, I think globally, of announcing too much and achieving little. Okay. Uh, so there's one more question. Can you ask if a company fully dependent on services should look at making products? Oh, uh, yes, Anna. Uh, if the, if, I think you need to translate that question as, should you start distributing products, the product that you make? Mm -hmm. Let me give you two, three examples. Let's look at what the hotels have done. Hotel is a service industry, okay? What has every hotel done? Whether it's the Taj, whether it's the Lalit, whether it's the Four Seasons, et cetera, they, or the Hyatt, they put that menu online and said, hey, if you want to order brunch, you want to order lunch, you want to order dinner, you can take it from us. So the very same product which they gave as a service in a restaurant, now they're selling as a product online so that you can order that. Okay, so I think uh, pure services, if you're in pure digital services, I don't think you have much to worry. But if your product is distributed physically and then you need a service around it, then you need to think about it. Okay, so there are many physical products I believe will go out of gear. But equally in this crisis, 
let me give you two examples so product categories which have taken off thermometers okay especially the flash thermometer everybody is you know you know using it right now the other product is the oximeter okay so there's a mar market for products also and linking products to services via data and keeping that database and working on that for insight that could be a very big opportunity okay so we have a question from krishnan uh, do you need different strategies to manage growth in business and stock market growth a uh, very good question thank you krishnan for asking that so here's the thing that's a great question again if you look at the world economy is down 5.2% minimum and maybe much higher by the end of this year but the stock markets are at an all time high and a lot of people don't get this okay we track our stocks regularly i've been tracking stocks for a long time in the companies that i've run etc here's the science you need to know about stocks all investors or all analysts give you a target price one year out so the stock price which is there right now is they believe that in the next one year these companies will perform well next you typically tend to put in the top 30 high performing stocks so that always goes up the rest of the ones are still you know floundering so the bsc which constitutes 30 stocks will always do well because they are the best run companies by and large and they have the best weight it's the other companies which will always be challenged okay so but you look at the fundamentals stimulus all time high gdp down all time low possibly unemployment all time high i think global unemployment is about 15 16% right now okay against a normal year of about 7 to 8 million 7 to 8% so unemployment has doubled okay societal challenges a lot there trade wars on right now so if you look at that combination you will say that there'll be very few winners okay but the few winners will possibly take it all so the stock market is one year out it's not today's reflection okay so we have the last question here uh, from uh, again uh, Shiva Kumar again, who is our treasurer. Uh, anecdotally, IIT entrepreneurs tend to be more switched on to product development, less so on connecting with customers, branding, marketing. From your experience, what would be your most important bit of advice you would give on this? So here's the thing. I think you need to sell a good product. A good product is a combination of the rationality of the product and the irrationality of the product. Both are important. So the product needs to be good. It must also be perceived to be good. remember that both are important okay one without the other does not work if your product is damn good but is not perceived to be good and you are not doing enough let's take word of mouth or advertising to do it then it's the best kept secret and the best kept secret then only you know that nobody else knows it so while a lot of engineers tend to focus on the product i would urge focus on the consumer and the customer it's not about the product if you focus on the consumer and the customer and ask a basic question what problem are you solving for the consumer or customer what need are you fulfilling if you do that then your product on focus will be even better and you will possibly have a winner on your hand so shift your focus from building the best mouse trap and believe it or not in america there were i think 4800 patents given out for mouse traps not many years ago 50 years ago so don't focus on building the best mouse trap but focus on solving a genuine problem or need of the consumer or customer if you are able to do that you'll automatically have a different product that's what i would say uh thank you shiv i think lata is having some technical difficulties uh, we're yes. done with the questions really appreciate your time and uh, very My good pleasure. insights all the best guys thank you keep winning <laughs>